finally reunited with her sister Emily, whom was imprisoned by her alter ego, also known as the Red Hair Grand Witch Kaina. She remembers her childhood where she used to get into trouble with her sister Emily. It appeared to be a great morning in the land of Zeba, where Queen Palesa and King Sequati of Zeba were visiting one of their villages outside the kingdom. The king and queen traveled with both of their daughters, Errol and Emily. They wanted to guide them on how to care for their people. Errol, as the eldest, was so eager to visit as she wanted to learn spells at the sacred Leolo Mountains on the north side of Sekakuna village near the border. Errol was a fanatic of light witchcraft and a very much intelligent scholar of advanced spells. Her sister Emily was a fanatic of dark arts and forbidden rituals. Both sisters left their parents and went to the Leolo Mountains where they found all kinds of spells, but out of all the wonders the mountains had to offer. Errol and Emily found the most powerful and terrifying spells that were even forbidden to learn. With their curiosity swallowing their fears and all senses of obedience, they disregarded the rules and learned all of those forbidden spells. They were very talented at that young age. After learning those forbidden spells, Errol discovered another spell hidden. It was written in a forgotten language, but Errol, with her intelligence and fond love for advanced spells, managed to decipher the language. The spell had a warning written above it which said, Babalangmo, Batlo Kumana Matla, Ebile Batlo Dula Magodimong Lebadimo, Yupsa Batlo Gobatsa Bao Babaratang. Errol did not hid the warning. Her lust for knowledge compelled her to read the spell. Suddenly her head became filled with unbearable pain as she screamed. Her cry caused a shockwave that shattered all on its path. Emily was quick to create a shield from her newfound forbidden spells. Errol's cry destroyed the entire sacred mountains of Leolo. It was so loud that heavens began to whip and rain fell down like the tears of a parent who lost a child. Errol's parents, when they heard a child's cry, they knew that it was one of their daughters. King Sekwati immediately shimmered and teleported himself to the shattered mountains and saw both of his daughters lying down. One was whipping and the other was unconscious with a shield surrounding her. King Sekwati waved his right hand, and rain paused as if time itself stopped. He went towards Errol. He placed his hand on top of her head and smiled. It is all right, my child. Your father is here now. He spoke softly as he lifted up Errol and held her on his left hand. He then approached the unconscious Emily and took out his sword on his right hand. He used his sword to split the shield in half. He placed his sword back and carried Emily on his right hand and teleported back. From that day, Emily never forgave her sister. She also grew jealous of her infinite power and talent. Errol became more powerful than anyone in Zeba, including her parents, of which were the most powerful wizard and witch in existence. Emily resorted to the dark arts and forbidden rituals to keep up with her sister, and the rivalry continued until Errol was crowned the Queen of Zeba and she received her title as the Grand White Witch. Emily later received the title, the Grand Black Witch. One of the dark nights in the land of Anukas, a young man stares at the flames of which are trying their best to breathe beneath the boiling river. He had a disconcerting smile on his face while sitting on the top of the tallest wall in the northwest part of the kingdom. I then approached as I sighed. As I sat down next to the young man, I felt a cold breeze, even though flames were looming before us. Well, to be honest, that is how it always feels when you are around cider. There is definitely something wrong with you, cider. Why are you staring at those flames with that smile on your face late this night? I asked. Cider was a very quiet man who rarely utters a word unless he was under the influence of grape wines imported from Asimaipotu. Besides his disconcerting and psychotic behavior, I think that might be the reason why I liked hanging around him. It is really disappointing that Elusar did not make it to our border. I was looking forward to take his head and sell it to get a lifetime of grape wines, Cider replied, while laughing like a madman who just saw something funny that no one around him noticed. I giggled a bit and brought myself to calm. You might still get a chance to cut someone's head. I saw Lord Denham plotting something with some dubious-looking man. I comforted him. 
Cider jumped with joy and began debating in soliloquy. He came up with suggestions of whom might be the target of the plot, while thinking about prices of their heads as he walked away from me like I was not there. I was not offended much, because that was one of his personalities. I sat there looking at the beautiful flames burning with fury and malice. I began to think of my brother and whether he was still alive after that war. Before my thoughts could consume my existence, I felt a warm hand touching my left shoulder, and I heard a soft-spoken voice saying my name, Aisha. Although the warmness of the touch was not threatening, I contemplated in my mind the possibility that it might be death herself or worse. My paranoia kicked in, and I slowly turned my head with nothing but silence screaming at me saying, Don't do it. It was my little sister, Roisha. With a sigh of relief, I scolded her. You should not sneak up on people, you know, I firmly implied. You are always jumpy, brother Aisha, Roisha said as she laughed at me, which made me even more angrier, but I quickly cowered to changing the subject because my little sister knew which buttons to press in order to start a fight with me, and she would always win with her crafty cheat powers. I had two brothers and three sisters, and I was the last-born son and the fifth-born child. My first-born sister, Eurisha, second-born sister, Yonisha, and third-born brother, Elisha, were born in Asimalok, where my mother comes from. The fourth-born brother, Zuisha, myself, and my little sister were born here at Enukes. Eurisha went to a long sleep before we were all born. Elisha and our mother left Enukes because of the wars that were looming around the four nations before peace birthed the soil. Asimalok and Anukes were constantly at war with each other, but my father, who was the advisor of the then king of Anukes, fell in love with the royal guard of Asimalok, my mother. Their love, like any other love tale, was forbidden. They managed to convince the kings of Asimalok and Anukes to free them from their duties in order to leave together. But few years later, tragedy befell the nation. The king and queen of Asimalok went to a long slumber, the king of Anukes tried to take over Asimalok, but my father convinced him to stand down, a feat only a few can achieve. This arrangement forced my father to return to his position as advisor to the king. Elisha left with our mother for Asimalok. The rest of my siblings and I stayed with our father and became members of the most elite organization called the Flaming Shadows. The organization was led by our father. My mother became an advisor to Princess Abenez, a position which later was handed over to Elisha and Teen. Ever since I was young, I have developed special abilities which really blended with my personality. I am what you call an oracle. I can see all things happening around me even further when I am in a deep sleep we call Aziza. Well, to be honest, I am always sleeping. When I am in this trance, the only two things that can wake me up are when someone I love or care about might be in danger or when one of my siblings annoyingly wakes me up. I need to go back to sleep. This unsettling atmosphere is becoming too much for me, I complained while taking a walk with my little sister. But I want to train with you, brother, she insisted with a sad-looking crafty face. Don't wake me up this time, I scolded her. She smiled and gave me you-don't-know-me-brother kind of look. We returned to the city and I went back to Aziza. At the west wing of the kingdom, Cider and Ilac sat next to Lord Denam on his giant throne built from thorns and lava spilling beneath it. He commands them to send lookers to Iratogarap to watch Errol's movements. The lookers are the covert organization that is under Ilac, which infiltrates other nations to provide valuable information to Lord Denham. Something does not seem right. Lord Denham looks vexed more than usual. A cough from Cider, trying to build his confidence when he asked Lord Denham to send him instead. He continued to boast that he will come back with Errol's head. Ilac quickly dismisses Cider's suggestion, and Lord Denham laughed like a roar of thunder. You two are always making me laugh. Don't worry, son, you will have your chance soon. Lord Denham reassured him as he slowly took a nap where he sat. Elac stood up and told Cider to leave the room and guard the entrance. He then went to meet with the lookers.